Hey guys, today I'm doing a review of the Stila Peter Piper Picked a Pack of Pickled Peppers Foundation. Just joking, it's called the Perfectly Poreless Putty Perfecta. Did you guys have to do that? Really? All of those peas? That's just too many peas for me. When I saw it, I was really intrigued by the word putty. Like looking at it, I just thought it was a regular powder, but it's a foundation in putty form, which I would expect to be like a tacky kind of firm play-doh kind of texture, which is why I really wanted to go for it. And here I am gonna review it for you guys. I'm gonna put it on, I'm gonna wear it throughout the day and show you what it looks like later on. But basically this foundation claims to, let me just read off the website what it claims. So I bought this myself, this was not a PR send out. It says that it perfects your skin with natural matte, undetectable coverage that looks like skin, not makeup. It's bouncy to the touch and it's a unique moldable texture that minimizes the appearance of pores and offers moisturizing properties. It conceals skin tone imperfections, leaving the skin looking airbrushed to perfection. Complete with a sponge, it's also the perfect mattifying touch-up on the go. And it's oil-free. Just putting this band around my head so I don't get anything in my hairline. I bought three shades, light, medium, and tan. You can probably guess which is which. <laughs> I'm probably gonna mix these two shades today to get something for me. The pan is pretty small. It contains 0.38 ounces or 11 grams of product. When I put my finger around the pan like this, it feels extremely thin. And then when I compare it to this product, which I just bought off Stila, which is a liquid foundation, this contains one fluid ounce or 30 mils. So the putty has just a little bit over a third of the product as this. But I'm just gonna go ahead and make the assumption that because this is like a cream product or a putty product, you need a bit less. Let's hope. So the packaging comes like this. It's got a little sponge and then this little clear casing over the top to protect your putty. It's got a nice size mirror in it. It's really lightweight and I do really like the typical Stila packaging. So now I'm taking the color medium just on the sponge. I assume you could use like a beauty blender or a uh, brush, but I'm just gonna use what came with it for the sake of the video. Okay. I mean, I don't know what I was expecting to be honest, but it looks nice. So I just watched the video on the Steeler website and the makeup artist is using a brush, which isn't fair because it didn't say that in the packaging. Because it comes with this, which kind of makes you assume that you're meant to use a sponge. But she started to pat and then swipe. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's definitely very light on the skin. It's not as thick as I expected for a putty. And it will be a test to see if it fills in these little pores here. But I might go in with a different shade to do that. Fresh sponge, I'm gonna go into the light shade and pat it over those pores. Um, yeah, I'd say it's filling it in a little bit. Oh, I think swiping helps get it in the pores. So this side has the poreless putty perfecta, this side does not. Hmm, I like it a lot so far. It's definitely a matte foundation, but I do think that it's not fully matte. I don't know if you can see, it might be just my lights, but there's a little bit of reflection. Now, they claim in the video that uh, it can be used for touch-ups on the go, it can be used over foundation. I definitely do think it's good for on the go because of the packaging. I do just wanna show you what the product looks like if I were to scoop some out. So I really want to show you the texture of the putty. Oh, I don't know if you can see that, but I've already hit pan there. I can just press it back in. Well, as I run my fingers over my skin, it feels velvety smooth. It feels very matte. Let me try it on a clean finger and see if any comes off. Clean fingers. A small amount comes off, but not too much. I hate the feeling where I'm wearing foundation and then it all just comes off anytime my face remotely touches something else. I'm gonna do the rest of my face now and come right back once I've got a little bit more makeup on. 
Now that I'm looking at myself in the mirror once I've done my makeup, I feel like I look airbrushed. But I can guarantee you guys, I do not use filters of any kind. I feel like in some areas, if you put too much, it might be visible. Looking up close at my skin, I can definitely see it on there actually. But in the camera, I look flawless. So now I've got some errands to run. I'll come back later in the day and let you know how it's wearing. Let me take this off. I love it so far. It honestly feels like I'm wearing nothing on my face, which is not normal. When I touch my face, it feels like there's nothing on there. But there is a slight amount of transfer on the hands. Um, but yeah, let's see how it wears. I'll be back in a couple of hours. Hey guys, I'm back. I just put a little bit more makeup on. Well, actually a lot more makeup on, as you can see. But I filmed as soon as I got back, but I forgot to turn the mic on. I still have the footage, but you can't hear the audio. So I'm going to overlay some of the footage of how my makeup looked when I came back six or seven hours after I filmed the first part of this video. I actually really liked how the product wore. It did get a little bit shiny. That's definitely enhanced by these huge lights that I have in this uh, studio that I have here. But I was really impressed by it. It had uh, kind of emphasized the blackheads on my chin, just only when I got up close. And then it also uh, settled into the lines under my eyes and on the crease of my nose and in here, but that's what happens with every foundation. Otherwise, my skin looked really good. Sebastian complimented my skin, and I really liked it, to be honest. I'm definitely gonna keep using it again. Um, I like the fact that it's really light, it's really compact and travel-friendly because it's not gonna fall and break open and spill everywhere. So I'm gonna be traveling with this for sure. I definitely recommend it. I don't think it would be good for really dry skins just because of the way it goes into your pores and fills them in. So I feel like it would actually emphasize if you had dry skin. It worked really well for me. I think it would work well for normal skins. I'm gonna have a lot of fun trying it out with beauty blenders and brushes in the future to see how it goes and you'll definitely see it in future videos. The Stila Perfectly Poreless Putty is $51 in Canada. In Sephora, United States, it's $39 US dollars. In Mecca, in Australia, it's $57. And in the UK, it's 28 pounds. And unfortunately, they only have five shades. Shitty shade range. I bought these three, I believe. So this one's the shade light. It goes one lighter than that, which isn't actually so bad. And then this is shade tan and it goes one darker than that, which I don't think is enough. Maybe they will expand the range as time goes on. So let's keep our fingers crossed for that. But um, as a product, I do really like it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know what you want me to review next.